You may be seated. As we prepare to partake of the Lord's table, if you don't have a Bible, we would love to put one in your hands. Uh, we're going to get some men uh, on each side to carry Bibles down. If you don't have one, just raise your hand. And if you don't own a Bible, you can feel free to keep this as our gift to you. Turn to Jude, Jude verse 5. That tiny book just before Revelation, second to last book in the Bible. Each week, we purpose to take the Lord's table, to take the Lord's Supper at Grace Bible Church so that we can remember afresh our Lord Jesus Christ and proclaim his death again. This is what he commanded us to do until he comes, and so we're eager to remember him this morning. Jude the half-brother of Jesus, since Jesus was only the adopted son of Joseph, he writes here to the church to strengthen them against false teachers. And in the flow of his discussion about being protected from false teachers, he reminds us of something astounding about Jesus. Look at verse 5. We'll read verse 5. I'm reading from the... New American Standard Bible. Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. The Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt. When Jude makes reference to the Lord, who is he talking about? Some of your, your translations sort of give that away uh, in exchanging Jesus for, for Lord there. But actually, our first indication as to who he's referring to actually begins in verse 1. Look back at verse 1. He says at the open of the letter, Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James and so on. Jude recognizes that he is a bondservant, a servant, or a literally a slave of his half-brother, Jesus Christ. And so in Jude's mind, Jude considers Jesus, since he is the slave of Jesus, he believes that Jesus is his master or Lord. And he states the same reality even more plainly in verse 4 by saying that ungodly men turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. So in Jude's mind, again, who is he thinking about as Lord? He's thinking of Jesus. Jesus is Jude's Lord. He, he says the same thing uh, a few more times in the letter in verse 17 and in verse 21. He just ex expressly calls Jesus the Lord Jesus Christ. And then finally in verse 25, he says, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all times and now and forever. Amen. God deserves all glory, majesty, dominion, authority. Those things belong to him, and it's through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So how does this help us in remembering Jesus this morning? Well, go back to verse 5. There are a couple truths that I want to highlight. Notice in verse 5 that he says that he, that is Jesus, the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt. Really? Did Jesus, was Jesus the one saving people out of the land of Egypt in the Old Testament? Jude says that Jesus was the one who orchestrated and fulfilled the exodus. Wow. That's what's being taught in this text. And not only did Jesus save people out of Egypt, but it doesn't stop there. What else does it say? It says that after that, subsequently, this same Lord Jesus destroyed those who did not believe. 
These are two amazing truths taught about our Lord. Jesus both saved people out of Egypt and then destroyed those same people that we read about in the famous account recorded in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, realize that Jude is not drawing on or expounding on some uh, fantastic new revelation when he says this, that Jesus the Lord, God the Son who speaks for God and reveals God to the world, that that Jesus rescued people out of Egypt and later destroyed them, Jude is not revealing something kept hidden in the Old Testament. You can read in the Torah, Genesis chapters 15, 18, 48, Exodus chapters 3 and 4, chapter 23, 32, Judges chapter 2, Isaiah 6, many other places in the Old Testament that describe this divine being called the word of Yahweh, the word of the Lord, or the messenger or angel of the Lord. This divine being who at many times appears as a man, he interacts with the Old Testament patriarchs and speaks on the behalf of God as God himself. That is all clear from the Old Testament before the New Testament was even written. And so when Jesus equates or when Jude, rather, equates Jesus as the one working in the Old Testament, God the Son, who has been revealing God, he finally he recognizes that that same divine being present throughout the Old Testament has finally appeared in the man, Jesus. The man from Nazareth who died on behalf of sinners, lived a perfect life, and then was resurrected from the grave, that same one was already present beforehand. And this reality ought to greatly aid our remembrance of Jesus this morning as we partake of the Lord's table. When we eat the little cracker that you're about to get and drink the cup of juice, we are declaring that Jesus, our Lord and Master, who was equal with God, even in the Old Testament, and who still is, that he has condescended and taken up a cross for a greater salvation than what was experienced by Israel in coming out of Exodus. When we take communion, we're declaring that the same divine power present in the Old Testament that brought a nation to its knees virtually overnight without a fight has now been displayed in conquering our sins for those who believe by bearing them in Jesus' body on the cross. Jesus experienced our condemnation, believer, in our place. And we're proclaiming the fact that Jesus is our Lord who brought us a peace that we couldn't earn on our own before God. None of our merits brought us the peace that we needed before God. It took Jesus' powerful, people-rescuing blood to accomplish that on our behalf. And this is the same Jesus who displayed his amazing grace toward us. He's chosen not to destroy us for our unbelief, as he did many in the Old Testament, and instead has given us salvation. If this Jesus is not your Savior, then he will be your judge. The God who saves is the same Lord who destroys. You can't separate the two. If you are currently living like Jesus is not your Lord, if you are pretending that he is not the Lord of the universe, then the, the call today is to repent. You can be saved today. And do not doubt Jesus' faithfulness to destroy those who pretend persist in unbelief and unrepentance. Take a few moments. Examine yourselves. Confess any known sin to the Lord. Determine to reconcile, be reconciled to anyone to whom you're not currently reconciled. This is a benefit of taking communion every week that we have an opportunity to do that. And Christian, when the, 
the bread and juice come in joy, identifying again, remembering, proclaiming again that God has saved you radically through this one means, Jesus Christ the Lord. If you don't submit to Jesus as Lord, please don't take communion when it comes by. To do so would be to garner greater condemnation, to bring greater condemnation upon yourself. But also don't reject Jesus' salvation today. The men are going to come, take communion on your own when your hearts are prepared, and then an elder will come and pray for us.